I'd now like to turn the call over to our first speaker, Steve Spading. Please go ahead. Hello, everyone. I'm Steve Spading, and I'm here with uh, Aaron Shanahan this morning and uh, Desiree Willis here at Robbins. I'm the Cutter Product Manager, and Aaron is our Application Engineer, and Desiree is our Technical Director. During the course of this presentation, we'll poll the audience several times. And during these polls, Desiree will take the questions from the audience, uh, presuming anybody has it. So with that, we'll get started here. Okay, during today's presentation, we'll cover some of the basics of cutters and soft ground tools and how they work. Uh, we'll go through that fairly quickly. Next, we'll move and talk about some of the promising opportunities for product development we're working on. We'll talk about a collaborative effort development program between Robbins and some other partners to find and test new materials and uh, anti-wear agents. And finally, we'll introduce some of our, our systems for monitoring cutters remotely and a system for changing cutters at normal atmospheric pressure in large EPB or slurry machines. First of all, start with an introduction to cutting tools and how they work. Pictures is uh, one of our PBMs that's working now in Malaysia. And this is an example of a hard drive cutter head with 19 inch by loading cutters. So here we have our uh, first poll question. And we'll pause for some audience feedback to see how you're all involved with TV and cutters. Um, Steve, we have our first question from the audience. Uh, how much experience do you personally have with TBM cutters? Well, I've been managing this department for uh, nearly two years, but I've been, been with Robin since uh, 1980, so I've, I've uh, worked my way up through the ranks. So in the engineering department, I've got a lot of experience with teleporting machines. So, uh, and before I took over the management of this department, I was managing projects all over China. So actually, I've had quite a lot of experience with uh, TDM cutters. So we've got about 5% purchasing, 14% uh, designing, 21% are direct users, and the vast majority are not directly involved at 60%. Interesting results. Now we'll move on here. In this section, I'm going to quickly go over some of the different types of disc cutters available and, and how disc cutters work. I won't spend too much time on that. I assume everybody has a basic idea. The picture here is a single disc base cutter mounted on a hard rock cutter head. There's a wide range of disc cutters available with 20 inch in diameter view. Largest we produce at this time. And disc cutters usually come with a replaceable hard steel ring. Okay, the design of a single disc face cutter can easily be seen in this exploded view. This is a 19 inch cutter shown, but it's very similar in construction to all face and gauge cutters. In the center of the guide diagram, you can see the replaceable disc ring also visible in this exploded view are the bearings. And the seals. Go ahead and change. Uh, one of the special types of cutters produced are center cutters. Uh, these are employed at the center of the cutter that the name implies in the position shown in red. There are two discs, and each disc rotates on independent sets of bearings, which allows each disc to rotate independently of the other one. The type of cutter is used at the center of the cutter head to maintain the required spacing between the cutter pass on the center. Go ahead and change. Here you see uh, one of the special types of cutters. Uh, this one is uh, tungsten carbide inserts. And these are used when the rock is very hard or very abrasive or a combination of both. What you're seeing is an example of a two-row tungsten carbide insert cutter. These are small six and a half inch cutters mounted on a small boring unit and are the smallest cutters we produce. In the past, tungsten carbide insert cutters were 
commonly used on large tunnel boring machines and very hard rock. However, today with the improved disk materials, it's uncommon for these to be used on machines that use 17, 19, or 20 inch cutters because of the improvement to the disk materials that's been made over the past several years. When change, This is an animation that shows chip formation between adjacent cutters. Uh, where are we at? The first cutter is the rock directly under the tip of the disc and forms radial client cracks. Uh, the second cutter penetrates, forming more cracks, and to form a chip. The cracks meet the middle, and the chip falls off. I think we can move to number 11 now. This is a diagram. It's essentially the same thing uh, that you saw before. Uh, at number one, the small picture, you can see the small chips that are falling away. At two, some surface cracks parallel to the face are propagated. At three, you can see the radial crack formation at four, the press zone directly into the disc. And at five, the large chip that forms between adjacent cutter paths is seen. Take note of the appearance of the chips in the right hand picture. Large uniform chips with little fine material is a sign of efficient cutting. Good and change. This slide has two parts. This diagram shows how penetration goes up dramatically with a small increase in cutter load after passing the critical pressure point. Increasing the cutter load from 0 to 150 only gets you 5 millimeters of penetration. However, after 150 kilonewtons, a large increase in penetration is observed with a much smaller increase in cutter load. In this case, the critical pressure is when the cutter load has exceeded 150 kilonewtons. Go ahead and click again for the second part of this slide. So the cutter load required to reach the critical pressure point is higher for harder rock. The same principle applies. The efficient cutting of the rock occurs to the right-hand side of the, of the critical pressure point. So this is one of the factors that drives cutters to larger sizes because you have to push harder to cut harder rock efficiently. A larger cutter, you can, you can have larger bearings. Go ahead and change. Now we're going to move into the different types of soft ground tools. This is an example of a knife bit. The knife bit is usually employed in stiff clay and meat rock up to about 10 megapascals of uh, strength. Knife bits are arranged in, on the cutter head very much like disc cutters are, uh, tracking in concentric circles. Good change. Arranged on either side of the knife bits are the scrapers. These tools scoop the muck into the chamber behind the cutter head from where it is eventually removed. Uh, when knife bits are employed, the scrapers don't cut the material, they only scoop it behind the cutter head. When knife bits are not used, then the scrapers will scrape material from the face. Go ahead and change. Here you see another type of scraper. This is the bolt on type as opposed to the pin on type in the previous slide. These scrapers are much stronger and are used where stiff soils are expected. Go ahead and change. Here you see a different view of the knife that the right hand picture shows some anti wear tools mounted on the face of the cutter head, a side protection bit mounted on the periphery of the cutter head. The tools shown in the two right hand pictures are used to prevent excessive wear to the steel structure of the cutter head. Go ahead and change. Fish tail bits are used in the center of the cutter head, and their purpose is to remove material from the center of the face and push it radially outwards where it can then move into the chamber behind the cutter head. On the top right, you see injection protection bits, which are just covers to protect the additive ports on the cutter head, keep them from being damaged by boulders. And on the lower right, you'll see a wear detector. And wear detector is designed to wear at the same rate as the other cutting tools. 
where the detector is connected to the hydraulic system, so when it wears down to its limit, it's no longer able to hold pressure and it'll set off an alarm in the operator's cabin. Go ahead and change it. Here you see a diagram of uh, knife bits with scrapers in the background. Uh, this diagram shows how the knife bits penetrate into the soil and how they travel in concentric tracks. Go ahead and change. This is a better view of the, of the knife bits. These dislodge the material that the, that the knife bits have loosened, and then the scrapers, which are the red pieces, show. Push the material into the chain behind the cutter head. Look at and change. Now we're going to move into the technology and development section of the cutter at the presentation. Change again. These cutters are designed to be very versatile. Picture view, you see 17 inch cutters mounted, uh, mixed face cutter head with some knife bits and some face scrapers. In mixed ground conditions, disc cutters have to work in an EPD or a story chamber where they encounter boulders which produce significant shock loads and they sometimes withstand high pressure. They also have to be able to cut rock from very hard to very weak down to 20 megapascal. the slide. Conversely, they have to cut extremely hard rock and it's excavate every side of the tunnel from uh, one meter up to uh, 15, 16 meters. It's a very unforgiving environment as the video I'm about to show you demonstrates. So we to change the video. Start with that. The first few seconds are the breakthrough with a large TBM. And then it moves into a video of a cutter testing machine at the Colorado Schools of Mine. This is a pretty old video, but it shows the violence of the chip making process. And it's also pretty instructive to know how much the cutter is pushed from side to side by the cutting forces. It's not always readily apparent. Or you'll need to let me know when the video ends. Okay, we're uh, we're uh, it's about thirty seconds left in it. Now, what you should pay attention to here is the uh, is the violence of of the uh, cutting action. You can see pretty clearly the shock loading. Cutter experience is just a normal cutting on a, on a massive face. Of course, it's much worse when, when you encounter boulders in a soft ground situation. Okay, it's finished. I'll go ahead and change to slide 24. Okay. So, what are our objectives for uh, cutter development? Really, it's pretty simple. Our objective is to decrease the frequency of cutter changes, which translates directly into more TDM uptime. We already enjoy bearings and seals that outlast several discs. Bearing technology improves pretty slowly over time as does seal technology. And we're working actively with seal and bearing manufacturers to avoid their products as they make improvements to them. In many applications, we're using state-of-the-art synthetic lubricants to increase bearing life and create the highest possible cutting loading. The primary focus of our development effort is to improve the life of the disc itself. Go ahead and change. This cutter material has had evolved over time. In the beginning, deep hardening alloy steels were used. Later, air quenched tool steels were used, and finally, Modified tool steels, modified chemistry tool steels were developed to further improve life. There are different processes we can employ to rig a few extra percent out of the life of a disc. However, many believe we are at the limits of conventional metallurgy. 
Robin's new pencil, as you'll see later on. 